Well, let's bring in former acting chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, Tom Phillips. And Tom, good to see you. The problem with Democrats' argument on the Hill that it's not going to pass Congress, we could have said the same thing about student loan bailouts. And Joe Biden just did it anyway, number one. But number two, when you're so naive on economic policy that you think uh, price controls, price uh, uh, price fixing could be not price, price controls could be a good thing. It begs, what other bad policy does she have up her sleeve? That's exactly right, Sean. I think you know it's unusual for an economic or a presidential platform to have bipartisan opposition to it, and this is what we're kind of seeing uh, right now. They have you know price controls on drugs is what they have in implemented. They wanted rent controls uh, as well. Biden was pushing that five percent increases are too much. Minimum wage, they're certainly for that type of price controls, and now it's food essentially. And price controls to fight inflation, which is the justification for all this, it's like saying we should have more government to fix too much government in the past, essentially, because the inflation comes from fiscal and monetary policy. And now you're going to put regulation on top of that to fix that problem, essentially. The, you write that, you know, in the segment, it was mentioned that there was sort of private scapegoats for this. Uh, even the supply chain argument doesn't really fly because there should be price reductions when supply comes back, if supply chains are the issue. We haven't seen that at all. So it has to be monetary and fiscal policy that's driving this. I believe, Tom, that these Democrats, if they can't control it like business, they want to destroy it. And these price controls would do that. And they try to pivot. Elizabeth Warren and say, oh, no, 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 it's about gouging. No, it is about dictating by the government how much a business is allowed to charge. And we must turn to the Elizabeth Warren bill that she introduced and Kamala Harris co-sponsored a similar bill back in 2020, Price Gouging Prevention Act. It's not gouging, it's controls, where the government decides what is a grossly excessive price. And it's not just groceries. They will tell businesses what they're allowed to charge. I could go on, but it also prevents manufacturers and companies from giving more favorable prices to, say, Costco, giving them bulk discounts. This is Soviet-style policy that will lead to shortages and black markets and hoarding. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's a very illiterate economic sort of policies coming out of the White House recently. And I, that's why you see sort of bipartisan, and uh, especially among economists. Economists are, uh, you know, highly against this on both sides of the aisle, essentially. But what they don't understand is that the, better, the best form of consumer protection really is competition, not regulation. So they are essentially arguing that we have inflation. Inflation is this economy-wide price increase. It's not just in particular industries. It's economy-wide. And they're forced to argue that there's some kind of collusion across all these competitive industries whereby companies can keep prices above cost. You can only do that if you collude, because if you do that, your competitor is going to come in and take your lunch, essentially. Right. So I think that, I mean, the, it's a lot of economic illiteracy in this administration that gets reflected in these crazy policies. Well, she has two choices. You can blame the Biden-Harris administration or you can blame corporations, and she's chosen corporations, which makes sense politically. But let's move on to this, because Senator Tom Cotton, he went head-to-head -head with ABC's Jonathan uh, Carl over Harris's tendency to just, poof, change her mind on policy. She said when she ran for president that she wants to eliminate private health insurance on the job well, 170 well, million Americans, John. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that is not her position now. She knows How do you know that's not her position? Medicare, How do you know that's not her position? I mean, she, she says she no longer she has not supports said that. She has not Medicare said that. for all. She has not said that. And when she campaigned for president in her own right, she did, in fact, promise things like decriminalizing I mean, illegal immigration but, and taking away and, health insurance. But that's his position she's clearly changed on, and no, she, she has said she has changed. Yes, 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 no, she has. No, no, no she, she has not. John, she, she, she has not said that. Anonymous aides speaking on background to reporters have said, well, she no longer believes these things. Okay, maybe she has changed her position on things like taking away your health insurance and confiscating your gun. If she has changed her position, she owes it to the American people to come out and say okay. in her own words when she changed and why she changed.
You know, Tom, isn't that the point that Kamala Harris should have enough respect for the American people that if you change your policy, and by the way, really bad progressive liberal Marxist policy, if you're going to change it, tell us why you're changing it. Is it because you've rethought the policy or is it just because of political reasons and you need to change the policy to win, but once elected, you're going to go back to your progressive Marxist ways? Yeah, I think in the private sector, you get sued for false advertising if you do this kind of stuff, essentially, I think. We don't have that for politicians. But the biggest flip-flop, I thought, was the DNC, you know, now labeling, labeling themselves as the Freedom Party. I thought that almost was absurd. I mean, they're breaking records in proposing new taxes and new regulations. So you're not free to spend your own money. You have to obey their rules. And here comes the Freedom Party, essentially. I think one of the main flip-flops is their taxes, because they, just like Bush did, you know, read my lips, no new taxes, said no new taxes on people below 400K. Then they went out and spent from 20 to 24 percent of GDP, an increase in, in the government spending. That can only be financed by taxes, either taxes now, taxes in the future if you borrow, or an inflation tax, which was a massive inflation tax imposed on the less than 400K people. That's a big, that's, I think, is the biggest uh, sort of deceiving part of their message that is that they're not imposing taxes on poor people. Mm. But they're also letting uh, Trump tax uh, cuts expire, which is a tax on everyone making under $400,000. Tom Phillipson, thanks for being with us. We always appreciate it.